Hello there and welcome to the video and welcome to one of my favorite games that I've ever played uh, so this was played in the Norwegian League at the turn of the month this was the 31st of uh, October Sunday so I played two games over that weekend uh, the former game against Jakob uh, Templin Graven was an away match we took uh, we took a bus for about about like an hour to I think was it Tunsberg? I think Tunsberg. Rather than Hönefoss, I think Tunsberg. And then I think this team that we played was Hönefoss. And just like in the other one, uh, you know, I had some time to prepare, but this guy I spent the least time on preparing because he simply didn't have a lot of games. And I was expecting him, you know, the very few games he had, he was playing some knight c6. There was even, you know, one game with b3 where he went knight c6. There was one game with uh, with d4, d5 where he went for, oops, knight c6. Uh, but there were like two or three other opponents that I was expecting to play. So I spent most of my time preparing for those guys. And this was both before the tournament when I got some info and also the night before. Uh, so this game was played. Uh, this was a home home match for uh, for Berum. So we played uh, at at the school, and like four or five clubs from Berum played in different leagues, and they all played different opponents. When we went to play the away match, that was the only match going on there. We played in, in some old old historic house, some uh, yeah uh, kind of house where people you know get together for for. Uh, you know gatherings and yeah so also paintings of people from like 1700s or something uh very old house but of course it's been renovated so it's nice to, nice venue to play in uh so this was played yeah in the school so there were a lot of people watching and uh it was nice to get some people you know from the club they were watching this game and uh some people came to me after it you know complimenting me on my play so, uh, well, one of, my, one of my best games, uh, I have to say. So, it started slowly. English opening, I played c4. He played e5, g3. And everything is normal here. Bishop d2, d5. I took a d5. Knight f3, knight c6. I castled, then he played bishop to e7. Now, I had one game like this in the Icelandic League, which was a rather short draw, so I didn't bother to analyze it. It was basically just the opening. So the last two games in the Icelandic League, I basically made short draws because I was kind of fed up and I wanted to, you know, start working on watch chess and not play. Some, you know, sometimes it's like that. Uh, and there my opponent also played bishop b7, which is supposed to be slightly inaccurate because white can now play d4. So that, that's what I did in this game and, and the other game. Uh, in the former game, my opponent played e4. Which I think is a better line, but taking a d4 is very solid and nothing really wrong with it. That's what my opponent did. I took with the queen. And here normally people go knight f6. But he thought about it and reasonably confidently played knight b4. He's been spending some time on the opening and now he played knight b4. And I'm like, uh, wait, what? I haven't seen this move too often, so now. You know, I'm kind of out of my comfort zone. Don't really know what to do. And, well, first thought is, okay, I don't want to trade queens. Uh, I mean, okay, we, we can still play that position. Nothing wrong with that. You know, we have four against three. There's some imbalance in the structure. But I want to keep the queens. So uh, I started thinking, okay, how can I keep the queens? Um, I have to cover c2 because he's running this. So either queen here or queen here. Um, then I started thinking more and I thought, why, you know, why haven't I seen this move? I played this position a bunch of times and almost nobody has played that before. So I thought maybe there's something wrong with, with the move. What happens if I take the pawn on g7? This pawn. First thing to think was, okay, if I take it, bishop f6, uh, queen h6, knight c2. I'm losing the rook. 
But then I saw an idea. And once I saw that idea, uh, I started to look further. So this happened in the game. I took the pawn on g -Zau. He played bishop f6. Now mind you, most of what I'm about to show you, I had to calculate from this position. I spent about half an hour in this position calculating the consequences of queen takes d7. So obviously he played this, you know, protecting the rook, I played this. And I noticed that if I play knight c3, which is what I played, and if he takes the rook, which is what he did, then I can play rook t1. And the key point here is that he can't play queen e7. And this is very important. And if he plays that, I have knight d5. I would take this guy. And his king is in trouble. If I'm worried about material, I'm probably going to win this guy as well. But the most important thing is that his king is quite, uh, quite exposed. So, okay. Uh, once I saw this, I got quite happy and I started to calculate, you know, if he plays bishop d7, which is what he played in the game and I kind of expected. And I also had to calculate bishop d4. In all honesty, I hadn't decided what to do, but I had seen that e3 was sufficient to give me, you know, at least compensation that I thought, you know, where I could attack and I was comfortable uh, being down slight material, but with, with, with a very nice initiative. So I saw that e3 was fine. I also saw some ideas of playing maybe knight d5 and, you know, in some last just sacking on d4 and playing for something like this. I mean, his king is basically toast here. I can, I can bring another piece in here and there's going to be some discoveries. Uh, I saw some lines where, you know, his king is in trouble. You know, it could be some bishop h3, knight d5 and he's very close to mate even. So... My conclusion was, if he plays bishop d4, I think e3 is fine, because I saw this, queen f6 as well, but I thought, even if after the queen trade, I'm doing quite well here. Because if he lets me take here, I'm just off material, so he has to play here. And this I saw. And I was happy with this, and I, I concluded my calculations, and I thought, okay, if he plays bishop d4, I'll probably play e3. If he plays it, I will recheck if I have other lines if he gets there. But I found a sufficient line, so I was happy with it. So the other, other line was bishop d7. When I had calculated most of this, I started to think, but wait a minute, wait a minute. What if he just takes my knight on c3, after I played knight c3, what if he just takes, and then takes on a1? And then I was very happy to find that even though I'm down the rook here, I'm uh, I'm not going to say winning, but close to winning after queen g7. And what I had to see was he can't play king e7 to protect the rook because I have bishop g5. And he can't go to the d-file because I have rook to d1. In both cases picking up the queen. So if he wants to keep the rook, he has to go here. But then I go bishop h6. And how do you defend? You actually don't. So this is what I saw. And actually bishop a3 is a better move, which I hadn't seen. Might have seen it if, if we reach this position, but bishop h6 is strong enough. He has to protect, and I have a very pleasant choice. I can take uh, this guy, I can take this guy, or I can first take this guy and then take an f8 and c2. I'm going to be up a bunch of material, a bunch of pawns, and, and a better position. So once I saw that he can't take on c3, I became very, very excited. So now I just had to find something against what he played, which was bishop d7. Okay, I saw this, and then I saw that I can play what I played in the game, knight d5. I'm hitting the bishop, and he doesn't have a lot of squares. Can't go here, can't go here, so he can either go here or here. And I thought if he goes bishop e5, I'll play bishop g5. And he's basically toast. I mean, if queen c8, knight f6, I take on t7 if he does nothing. If he takes, I take this. So mate on e7 and uh, and his rook is hanging. Uh, did he move the king? I don't think he did, but he's getting mated anyway. <laughs> so also f6. I can play queen h5, and this will not end well for him. 
Probably might take this and you know bishop d5 is coming, etc. Queen g4, all sorts of things. So he kind of has to go to d7. So again, I had to calculate all this from this position. So queen takes, bishop f6, he went for this, knight c3, he took my rook, played rook to d1, bishop d7, and knight d5. So he went to e7, which I was expecting. And here I needed to find something. Fortunately I did. Queen g7. His rook is attacked. He has no way to defend it, he has to go to f8, but now bishop h6. And he's actually in deep trouble because I have a huge threat. Let's say he tries to get the knight out. I play knight f6 check. And he's made it. This is the uh, threat that basically decides the game in most variations. Same thing with you, you can't move the bishop. First of all, I could win the queen, but it's even stronger to uh, just keep checkmate. So he made Luft f6. So this way, if I take an f6, he can take with the rook. But all my pieces are active, except one. But now it has a role. So which piece did we play here? Boom, bishop f3. We are coming here. He played bishop f5. If he plays bishop e6, the same mate is on the agenda. I had seen this. Uh, I had actually seen this. You know, before I took on g7, I, and I was so super happy to see this. Again, this mate decides. So he played bishop f5, so he can interpose on g6. But it doesn't matter. I just take. This happened. Uh, if the king runs. I think it's close to mate if... Uh, well, I can win the queen. Worst case scenario, I can play knight b6. Knight f6, win the queen. But it looks like... It's very close to mate, but I play rook f7 here. Trying to hold on to material, but after queen g8, he thought about it for a while and then uh, resigned. Uh, if he now plays king d7, I'm not even going to take the queen. You know, I can play this and take the queen, but I'll just play this, and he doesn't have a move. Very funny line is something like this. Very funny checkmate, knight b6. Oh, you can go here. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, where was the check? Oh, knight e7, sorry. Knight e7 is a checkmate. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, undo. Yeah, so knight e7 is a checkmate. Um, yeah, he can't run with the king. Knight takes e7, then I take the queen. So. The options that he has is either rook f8, but then again, this mate that we've come to know is back on the agenda, and we take on f8. And the other option is bishop f8, but then I take, and he can resign. Next move is bishop a3 or something, getting off the diagonal. If king here, I move the knight, win material, or, t or simply take on f7. And finally, if it goes here, it's going to be queen e6. And mate on the next move. So after queen g8 check, he in fact uh, resigned. So a pretty nice game, which I'm very happy with. Uh, sacrificed the rook and got the crushing attack. Managed to calculate well, and yeah, this is the kind of game that uh, we love to play. We wait to play such a game. And yeah, I've been kind of on, on cloud nine since I played this game. <laughs> Uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you soon. Well, I haven't played any any any, any recent games, so we'll try to find some some other content on the channel. Maybe we'll look at some some old games, some theory, some pattern recognition. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you later. Bye bye.